everybody, this is your boy Angel. I hope and pray that you're having a blessed day. I know I am. Um, I'm really excited to bring you this uh, deck profile today, guys. Uh, this is going to be my uh, BLS Super Soldier deck. It's a really, really fun deck to play. Um, pretty strong, actually. It's not competitive, but you can string together some wins with it, uh, especially if your opponent is uh, not prepared to deal with the damage pushes that this uh, deck can make. Um, deck does like to go second, really doesn't have much in the way of uh, turn one plays, but once you really get this deck rolling, uh, it is a lot of fun to play in. Like I said, you can really get some wins, as, especially now that our, our boy OG BLS is at two. So let's get into it, show you guys what we're working with, and hopefully you enjoy it. Starting off, running Triple Super Soldier. Uh, card's great. Uh, standing by itself, it's, uh, like I said, real solid. It's a good card. Um, what it does is if I attack and destroy my opponent's monster, send it to the graveyard, I can inflict damage to my opponent's life points equal to that monster's attack points. Um, and then if it's destroyed by card effect, I can float a Gaia, uh, the Pierce Knight monster, out from my deck to my uh, uh, field. So, you know, it's a real solid card just by itself. But um, you'll see as we get into the deck that can get souped up and really, really broken. So, run this at three. I'm running the one Chaos Max because it is a very welcome addition to the deck. Um, uh, a very good tech uh, I decided to add. Um, very solid all around uh, because simply, you know, you can't target it, you can't destroy it. And coming up in a format where I think that's actually going to be uh, pretty key, I think uh, we are going to see a lot of, you know, uh, True Draco invoked. Um, things like that, uh, you know, ABC, I have actually just no answer for this card at all. And, you know, it's so searchable, it has great synergy with the deck, so to me it's just kind of a no-brainer to at least take it in at one, so I'm going to one Chaos Max. Next up, favorite part of the deck, looking at this guy together, Double BLS. Um, like I said, what can I say? I've uh, been a long time coming. Uh, you know, it, it's got a little bit overdue, but I'm just glad when I finally decided to make the decision to uh, bring it off the list to, to two. Uh, he's a little bit slow now um, compared to back in the you know, infancy of the, uh, the game, uh, back when I was coming up when I was a kid. But uh, he's still a very good, very, very strong card. He has a load of consistency to the deck and a load of power as well. So, like I said, just got to see our boy um, uh, on board at the beginning off the list and that too. And hopefully we'll be able to get him at three. So, double BLS. Next up. Now, these are what really, really get your uh, Super BLS going. This is what can really, really make him an absolutely broken monster. So you're going to triple Beginning Knight. Well, when you tribute uh, for your BLS using your Beginning Knight, what happens is he essentially gets Envoy of the Beginning effects in the sense that he can banish one monster on the field and he can attack and destroy a monster and attack again. But he's not limited uh, like Envoy of the Beginning is uh, in itself. So I can actually do both of those things if he's used for the Tribute Fighter for my BLS. And uh, so that actually makes him really, really strong right there. And then also if he's banished from my graveyard, I can get a Ritual Spell card from my um, uh, deck to my hand. So once again, any Ritual Spell card, uh, be able to search that when he's banished. Very, very solid. So I like to run him at three. Next up, his counterpart. Evening, Twilight, Night. Like I said, I like to maximize both of these guys at three because these are the pieces that you do want to see. Um, Eating Twilight Knight is very, very good as well. Um, what he does is when you uh, tribute something for your BLS using him as fodder, um, he gives the, or your BLS the ability to banish one from my uh, opponent's hand face down until the next end phase. Then I can banish another monster on the field. And what's good about both of these guys is these effects of both of them together overlap. And so what happens is you have a really, really broken monster that can banish two uh, from field, neg one from your opponent's hand, and then swing twice. It's just it's really 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 strong. I mean I get that out almost every duel I play um, uh, with the deck. It's like it's very very hard to stop. And if your opponent is not prepared to deal with those kind of damage pushes, like I said, you really can rack up some wins against some uh, competitive things. Uh, you know using this deck. Uh, so like I said, this has been a load of fun to play in that aspect because you can really put together a, a really really broken monster. Next up, we're running triple envoy of chaos. So basically what he is is BLS honest. I can discard him uh, during my battle phase. Um, the card is really, really good. Uh, I, I can boost up my BLS by 1500. And then what happens is during my end phase, I can uh, banish a light in the dark uh, from my graveyard and loop him back to my hand. And then, especially if you have your um, your Eden Twilight and your Beginning Night in the graveyard, you can trigger their effects to search and then loop him back. So, which again is a really, really strong play. Turns into a plus two out of nowhere, as well as be able to get insane uh, amounts of damage on your opponent, on your uh, board uh, to your opponent. So. Like I said, uh, Triple uh, Envoy Chaos, very welcome addition to the deck. And uh, another piece of what the deck needed. 
Next up, I'm running the one Arisen Guy, and then the one Charging Guy, the Fierce Knight. So what each of these does, if he's uh, if my opponent controls more monsters than I do, I can just normal summon him at uh, 23, and um, if he's uh, attributed, I can uh, then special summon one BLS monster from my hand onto the field. Um, then I can also banish him for uh, uh, out of the graveyard for a virtual summon of a BLS. So very so uh, solid all around right there. And then charging guy, I can just normal summon him, and his attack becomes 1900. So it becomes just a good 1900 beat stick, you know, good opening play. And then if I attribute him, I can then ser actually search any BLS monster that I want and get that from my deck in my hand. So very solid. And also he can be banished from graveyard as well uh, for the virtual summon of a BLS. So I throw in the one one split on these guys. They are they are good cards. Um, like I said, you know, I, I, I see some builds uh, I've seen in the past don't run them, but like I said, like now that we have a uh, ability to create a more pure build, they are very, very strong. So, like I said, I like to run the one-one split on those guys. They uh, they do come in handy. Then double sphere Karibo. He's actually a very good hand trap, uh, especially in a deck that does not have very much defensive capabilities. This, this deck's pretty much all in. You know, since it's just, just throw, throw caution to the wind, you go all in with uh, all guns a blazing. But he has add a little bit of defense to the deck in the sense that when my opponent declares an attack, I can discard discard from my hand, and then I can change that attacking monster to defense position. And then that is really good because it doesn't target, as well as I can banish him from graveyard for the ritual summon with BLS. So once again, double sphere Karibo, very solid. And then rounding out my monsters, run the two Manju. Anytime you're running a ritual deck, you obviously want that extra bit of consistency and searchability. And so double Manju, don't need three. Uh, has been very very good for me so I can probably keep it right around there that rounds up my monsters there then next up getting into the spells I'm going to be running triple gateway of chaos what happens is when this is activated I uh, get a BLS monster or a guy the first time monster to my hand that's mandatory and um, if you're ever playing against somebody who's uh, running gateway of chaos and in capacity so I've seen it run into in some uh, gimmick decks uh, uh, around here and there um, they have to be able to get a BLS monster from their deck to their hand. Um, so, uh, you know, a BLS monster or a guy that fears night monster from deck to, my, to their hand. Um, and so that once again, that's mandatory. But when I activate it, I'll be able, I'm, you know, able to get a free BLS. So my super soldier comes right to my hand or my Gaia comes right to my hand. And then if uh, anytime a monster or monster is sent to the graveyard, I get a spell counter on the card. And uh, it can hold a max of six. But what I can do is I can remove three and then search for a ritual spell card. And so that's very, very handy because I'm able to, you know, add that bit of consistency uh, as well as, you know, basically search my monster and then get the spell card back in almost sometimes the same turn. So, like I said, Triple Gateway of Chaos is, is like I said, it's almost like a Rota as well because it, you know, gets your pieces. So very, very strong card all around. Uh, like I said, maximize it at three. Next up, the best spell in the deck, and that's Super Soldier Synthesis. Uh, what this does is um, allows me to a ritual summon a BLS from graveyard or uh, my hand. And so uh, what uh, I'm allowed to do, I can play cards like trade in right now, trade in a super soldier uh, BLS, get the plus, and then be able to summon it back uh, from graveyard using this card. What it does is I can ritual summon uh, any BLS monster with this card, and then I have to send one light and one dark monster to the uh, from uh, you know my hand and my deck to uh, the graveyard to be able to ritual summon that monster. So if you have uh, a dark monster in hand, um, you send the dark monster and then send the corresponding uh, light attribute to the graveyard and vice versa, and then get your uh, ritual summon from uh, hand or uh, or graveyard and get your BLS out on the field. I mean, it's really, really strong. You can only use that once per turn, but it, this card is just really amazing. This is what the deck needed. And in my opinion, this card alone really made the deck playable. So like I said, triple synthesis, um, I, I really have to pull out Konami for this card. This was, you know, right on, spot on the money. This is exactly what it needs to be able to be playable. Next up, triple trade-in. Obviously, because we're running eights, and uh, with the ability to be able to ditch an eight and then still get value off of it in the graveyard, uh, very, very strong play at the deck. Um, so, you know, be able to maximize on trade-in for that bit of consistency as well as your convenience because you can uh, get the equity of, on your BLS anywhere. Very, very strong all around. Uh, next up, double allure. So because we're running a lot of dark targets, and uh, you know, like I said, be able to banish, you know, two of those to plus four, essentially, excellent card. So, uh, it's, it's just you know, being anytime I'm able to run allure of darkness, I gotta do it. <laughs> it's, it, it has to be done. The deck does need some draw power. It's it's really really amazing card all around. So, very, gotta love it.
double twin twisters because you know we have to be able to deal with back row. There's a goal second deck, so um, you know be able to you know, clear out anything that can interrupt our plays there uh, with the twin twisters. And also, once again, it's another situation where I can potentially be able to still get two for the price of one by being able to ditch a BLS, blow up two back row, and then summon the same BLS in you know super mode by <laughs> pitching uh, you know uh, one of our little chibi guys. So once again, double twin twisters very very strong in the deck. Play the one foolish burial for you know extend my plays. A foolish always a great card to you know addition to almost any deck. So one foolish, one chaos form uh, for any of my BLS monsters and uh, more, more so uh, respectfully my chaos max dragon. I have to at least one chaos form to get him out. So get him out right there with that. Play the one Rageki for board wipe because as I said we love going second with this deck and. One beginning of heaven and earth. Though this is a card that's really, really good actually, because what it does is, um, I flip it. I reveal three warrior type monsters uh, from my deck, including at least one black lesser soldier monster or one guy of the fierce knight monster, and then I have my opponent randomly select one of them. And then if they select the uh, the BLS monster of the guy, it goes to my hand, or then I can send all the uh, the rest of them to the graveyard. And so uh, essentially, I can you know load up my graveyard with stuff that I want, and or I'm basically going to get a free BLS which is really what your main target would be to my hand because I now that I have BLS at two, I can just, you know, uh, get three BLS out, et cetera, and be able to get one to my hand. It's really, really strong. So, like I said, I run that uh, that card at one because, it, as I said, it's been very, very good for me in testing. Um, and, you know, it's something that, uh, ironically, I didn't pay much attention to until um, BLS came uh, off the list yesterday. And I had a buddy of mine, you know, uh, mention that to me as a tech. So I, I'm glad that he did because it's, it really, really added a wrinkle to the deck, a, a lot of power to it as well. So I'm going to love that. Um, next up, just going to the extra deck a little bit. Um, you know, that's this is obviously all up to, you know, personal preference. But, you know, this is just what I'm working with for the time being. Uh, triple Utopia package. Like I said, anytime I'm running uh, rank fours of any kind, I'm going to uh, utilize this package right here. I love it just like that. Um, triple Utopia because I like to be able to... Uh, Make them 5,000 twice in the duel. Gotta love it. I'll play the one, uh, Karen Gorgon. Um, you know, I think True Draco is going to be around some capacity, and I think it'll be handy for that. And this targeting effects, being able to control how that goes on the field is real, uh, real, is real solid in itself. So, play the one, Karen Gorgon. Play the one, Castell. Uh, because it's Castell, we know what he does. You know, be able to clear, you know, problem things off the board. We gotta, like I said, run the one, Castell. For the one dweller still up there with the best rank fours in the game. Gotta 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 have this in your toolbox. One Digusto to pop. And that's it for my rank fours, I believe. And then I run the one Lance a lot because this is actually one of my favorite rank eights altogether uh, ever released. Uh, be able to attack directly, pop something on the field, then negate any effect. Um, very, very good card. Then run the galaxy package. I uh, consider you know my hope harboring part of, you know part of my galaxy package these four guys right here anytime I can make eight uh, you know when I have the option to do so I want to run those four guys right there real solid real strong um, you know like I said very very convenient get you out of tight pinches wins your games this really can, this can really get you out of a, a lot of tight spots be able to pop and then have a four thousand body um, and then this right here this is actually my favorite galaxy eyes monster for printed because I mean be able to become 5800 really really get you out of a lot of tight bonds uh, binds rather I mean so like I said I run my galaxy package and so I'm able to run eight and then rounding off um, since I played Lance a lot it allows me to rank up into my spiders um, once again never summon these but uh, just being able to have them in the toolbox very very solid additions very good for the for, you know for the deck uh, anytime you're able to make them uh, run them once again. You never know when they'll come in handy for you because they are very, very, very good monsters um, within themselves. And so, you know, just be able to uh, have the option to go into them when you want to is, is very, very solid. So, thanks everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, this has been my Black Lesser Soldier deck profile. Feel free to, you know, leave me any criticism in the uh, comment section. Anything you feel I can improve on as a uh, tuber, um, you know, on the deck itself. If you have a you know prior experience running the deck. Um, like I said, um, I welcome to criticism, guys. You know, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought. And uh, this has been your boy Angel. Peace and blessings to you, and bye bye.